please spend the first five minutes of the match looking for the glider. Could do that. Maybe it's off map somewhere, do you know what I mean? It's like Arnhem's got all those like That would be good. I wish they'd done that. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe one of them plays Brits and lands a glider there. And then we... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be there so it, good. There it is. <laughs> there it is. We found the glider. But they took, they literally took the map. And I love Stern Panther. I hope he's listening. I hope he's listening. He's a very scientific guy. And to him, well, the glider's still lost. It's fine. Originally, it was like, I'm sorry, sir. The glider's been lost. All five men died. Now it's like, the glider's <laughs> lost. Where is the glider? <laughs> Changing the tone of the Company of Heroes maps one by one. Completely, yeah. <laughs> Completely. Well, you'll be very pleased to know that Paul is playing Brits, so we may see the glider. Oh, spoilers. Return. For God's sake, I'm not casting anymore. I, I oh. refuse. You've spoiled it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's observe the match. I'm, I'm coming. Wait for me. Oh, Luciano. Oh, well, <laughs> Dan, we've got a game of spot the glider. Apparently Ooh. it's off map. I thought it might be off map, you know. Something I think you there. should take direct... Have you ever seen, like, a Twitch plays Pokemon? No. Well, that's where Twitch chat commanded Pokemon Red and, like, up, down, left, right, A, B, oh, okay. start, and whatever they said happened on screen. Right. I think the Twitch chat should help you find the glider in the preamble, like, before the game starts itself, you know? <laughs> so whatever Twitch chat says, that'll control your camera and you have to react to it. That'd that would be, so be horrendous. Funny. And also for the people watching YouTube in the future who have no idea Not what is going on. part of the game in the <laughs> countdown time. In the countdown time. Oh, in the countdown any. time. I mean, yeah, that. that's what I mean. You've got two minutes. Play Find the Glider. Okay, are we ready? Are we... Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> no, these are, these are a selection of lovely... Uh, Playing to these. Nope, but it's, it's, it's not here. Chat saying uh, up. Ragnar Hammerbane says up. Uh, I can't go up. I'm already the furthest uh, point that, that I can. Okay. Is it in the he's, sky? he's up, is guys. It left. Flying. Lifeless says left. Check left. 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 Like over here. Mm. Oh, that'd be no. west, wouldn't it? I can not... see some hay bales. It's quite nice. Not Nothing in the distance, Is it hidden though. behind this house? No. Down then, Ragnar Hammerbane said. And if he says down, you go oh. down. You'll often grab uh, the back of your head and just say, down! Down, down would be here. Uh, nope, not, not seeing it. I'm checking like I'm checking right back here as well. You know, okay, like, so finally they're now saying right, I guess, which means west. I can't see shit. I... I... There it is! You yes! found it! Where is it? There's the glider! It is, uh, it is on the right side VP. There we go. So the glider does exist. It's still here. It's officially off map in uh, in normal camera terms. There we go. <laughs> God. It does exist. Fair enough. I'll let them off, I guess. <laughs> 43 seconds to live, boys, as you can see on screen. And girls. There is a 0.45% uh, female viewership in Company Heroes. I am nipping to the loo very quickly, Dan. Yep, that's fine. No worries at all. <coughs> Sandari, it's uh, it's still, it's still, it, it makes sense. You know, it just means lost, as in you know, we lost it. You know, so it's it's been fallen, back to its original intended. Uh, name whilst a is away by the way guys this is gonna be our last game thank you so much for everybody who uh has stopped by today we will have obviously a chat when this game is finished to to say goodbye i'm not gonna sign straight off but just want to say thank you everybody for coming to show support we have 10 episodes uh of king of the hill so uh, this is gonna be every sunday from 4 p.m gmt and uh, relic very kindly put forward 400 pounds for this event uh, to help support it, so uh, we are going to be still taking all the donations to make the prize pool big, but we do have that lovely little uh, cash injection from Relic at the start, so big thank you to Relic uh, for helping this progress year on year in size. And uh, without further ado, A, hey, you ready? Yes! Alright, it's your turn to intro by the way. I'll, I'll oh, fantastic! <laughs>
Hello there and welcome! You are watching King of the Hill, of course, and that's why you're here. This is the fifth game of the first episode of Series 3. You are in the south, and you're watching Hoi Paul. He's playing as the Brits. This is his infantry section, moving its way up the battlefield. He is your reigning king. That's right, and it's a grudge match because his competitor today is going to be Jay for Jet playing as the OKW. This is an exact matchup of the very first game where we saw Jay for Jet uh, in his competitive play element. And uh, safe to say it was Paul that won the last one with an abusive strategy. Uh, Jay wants to uh, knock him off of his throne and uh, get revenge. Paul, though, is doing a masterclass today. He's on a tear. He's having a hell of a day of competitive action. And as I say, this guy was once top five in the world. Lest we forget it, because when he's on form, he's damn near unbeatable. Only Von Ivan, his old nemesis and arch rival, nearly beat him today if it wasn't for a tricky bit of Panther 360 no scope action. This is Paula very was lost. The, was the first person to hit rank one in all five factions, or was that Jove? Jove's done it, Paula has been close, I think he met, yeah, I think he's done it, you're right. And also Jezulin was the very first when it was only four factions before Brits were released. Mm. Uh, recently Kimbo, so there are your four guys that have literally no life. <laughs> well, it's uh, Paul building some green cover sandbags to uh, help him hold fuel territory on the right hand side. Universal Carrier, I think at the moment, is pretty much just going to be scouting the locations of Jay in the early game. Jay's obviously gone for the Kubel to do some quick capping, get those resources going. But uh, how is he going to deal with the Universal Carrier in the early game? He's going to deal with it by just trying to outmuscle it with those Sturm Gewehrs. You know, you've called for the STGs, they are the prototype assault rifle that all assault rifles after it were based upon. Or well, most, at least. I think he's done quite well there. He's going to uh, claim the church. And he's going for some capping on the left-hand side. He must be careful with the Universal Carrier. Coming in and harassing those folks. Oh, sorry, the Sternpine is in negative cover. Universal Carrier here. Going up against the Sternpine. He is constantly harassing their health damage. Finally getting rid of one of those... 32 manpower models? It's either 30 or 32. It's a lot regardless. Hmm. And there's going to be more to drop as well. Jay's going to have to get out of there. He cannot suffer this damage. What is he doing? There we go. We've finally got him retreating away. Universal Carry is going to pursue. Tommy's get some shots in as well. And that wasn't the best stop. It wasn't though, but we're seeing these mirrored engagements on both sides. In fact, there's a Tommy squad. It's got a difficult retreat path uh, through the center of the map. And you see Jay for Jet. He immediately <laughs> senses this opportunity to get an initial squad wipe. Those uh, Car 98 Mausers get the kill! Well, Tommy's thoroughly destroyed. Don't worry though, of course, it's only three and a half minutes in, no trucks deployed. Meaning uh, Panzerfaust aren't going to be a thing. So Paul's just reversing around, trying to get that front gunner facing. We might get destroyed thanks to small arms fire here, so he's going to run away. Look at that health bar drop! J for oh, wow. Jet! Nearly gets the kill, is he going to try and get it now? You know, he run after to. him! He has One to. More salvo. He's got to. As the Universal Carrier goes past the the archway, surely. Mind you, Jay, oh, I think he's maybe getting, getting a bit distracted by this. Yes, he may suffer manpower casualties by being distracted, but Jay's a very different kind of player. I've played Jay before twice, actually. And I've played a lot of top level players and lost, of course. But uh, Jay was the most frustrating to play. He's got such a tricky style. And uh, he plays in different ways. He's got his own style that he's built up over time. As have a lot of NA players. We just saw Jaeger Light Infantry pop there, so scavenge doctrine uh, for Paul. Paul, uh, I think he's definitely uh, flexing his muscles today. We've seen him come out with a variety of. Uh, that's Sorry, right, in my head, a, a Chinese-American guy was just like, a very nerdy-looking guy was literally just flexing his muscles. It was too vivid of an image that just popped into my head. I had to chuckle. It was uh, interesting, to say the least. Maybe I'm gay. Probably. <laughs> what? Dan, that's, that's it. I, I'm deciding now. No, that's it. No. Wine might be getting to me. Let's cast properly. 
A sus cast with <laughs> intent to be picked up by a professional esports team. Of course, that's going to happen. The wasp is deployed, by the way, in the south. Universal carrier isn't fully repaired. Yep, love the uh, love the wasp as an upgrade option. We really good at dealing with all the garrisons in the center. By the way, uh, Paula also brutally uh, decapping um, by going for the strategic cap outside JP Jet's base, nullifying any of the capping the Kubel has been doing on the right hand side. So Jay really needs to refocus everything there now to get his resources back, but he is leading on a triple cap VP situation. Yes, indeed. So patchwork quilt of territory sectors out there, done. It's all over the place. Um, notably, Jay has his fuel and Hoi Paul has his. Google takes a little jousting operation into the Tommies and the Stern Pioneers force them away. Enemy nice, yeah. Jay taking some time to repair the Kubel as well. Important. Actually, I think that Jay, once he recaptures this territory, still comes out on top in resources at the moment. Paul um, is the only player to have We're lost a squad so point. far with that Tommy section. And uh, A's bug splatted. That's good. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> like? I need to reinstall the game. After a while, the game decodes itself and disassembles its code. It's uh, it's fantastic, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, whilst A's reloading back in, we'll uh, check out the action. There's a retreat here on the Tommy squad, which uh, is going to be pretty safe. I think Google's not going to do any damage whilst chasing. Two Vox Grenadiers pushing the Tommies out of the center and I uh, really want to see the Wasp action from Paul. He's got to get that flame damage on. He needs to be careful though because there is an SWS up for Jay for Jet now. Mechanized Regiment was the choice and he has got Faust available to Capture Faust up. Being overrun. Sorry, it's repaired now. He has got Faust available to catch the Wasp off guard. Dan, you're leaving a, an anchor for me to jump in, but I'm not in the game. It's know, just your natural disposition now. You're like, know. I'll finish my sentence with a functionary clause allowing A to jump in. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> this is a bait if I've ever seen it. JV Jet pulls back a little bit to bait the wasp in. And uh, Paula now for that is going to take another foul. This is well planned by Jay. He's going to get... It's abandoned. Of all things, don't see that option. Uh, don't see that ever on the Wasp, I think. First time, I think. Jade loses a squad of Volks Grenadiers. The Tommies just pick off the models so fast. On the right hand side as well, Engineers clearing up a Stern Pioneer squad. Late retreats by Jay. I think he's trying to run Jaeger infantry in to deal damage to the UC. And he does manage to get it, so it won't be recruited. I gotta wonder if that was a little bit too costly of an engagement. But the squads Enemy now do even up. Point. Jay's gonna be building a Puma as the first vehicle to enter this game. And uh, I guess that means Jay's actually predicting that Paul's gonna go for uh, the Valentine Enemy spam builds that we saw Try him to play against Tobis points. earlier today. But actually, if uh, Jay brings out the Puma first and Paul notices this, he's every right to change strategy and maybe play the. Dan, uh, I'm waiting at nine minutes and two seconds. For okay, so um, nine, nine oh one, nine oh two, nine oh three. Perfect. Nine oh four. Okay, and uh, Jay projects spilling back onto the battlefield and needs to reconnect his territories. A hard front is meeting him though. Vickers heavy machine gun set up. And just disallowing the Stern Pioneers and cock blocking them, quite frankly. He struggled so much with that one territory. But uh, actually, what I like is that the Kubel is still being really aggressive. So whilst Paul's playing on the front line, the Kubel's capping around the back. In fact, the Kubel may even get some, some shots off here. Um, yeah, and it's just really good because it just means once that territory is reconnected, there's a lot of resources coming in uh, for Jay. So it's being well managed. Hmm. Oh, talking about uh, said Kubels, there's the death of the Kubel Vargan. Just a small arms fire and the Vickers heavy machine gun, which is a deceptive amount of, of damage. It's not so much a suppressive character, it has a little bit more damage than suppression relative to the MG42. 
Always catch people it off guard. Mm. It was the line of sight being granted from having the uh, sappers so close. If you look at their line of sight, it's quite large. Just take off the fog wall, they can pretty much see the earth. <laughs> there we go, they just reveal Jaeger light infantry. Machine gun opens up, but uh, there's still no competitor to the Puma right now. Are we going to see? See any ramming of the building? Damned enemies trying to take uh, a point from us. Nah. It'd have to go around all four corners and it'd probably mm. take a long time. There's no counter though, he might as well start. <laughs> just to get rid of it. It's a good way to get an MG out of the building is to just start playing that way because it means your opponent feels, uh, feels threatened. I hope the quality of life and future relic titles surrounding coming here is free. Like the improvements to micro allow things like that. Oh, in the west, by the way, we've had infiltration grenades on the Tommies. That's a difficult retreat path now. Looks like they're not reflexing though, and the Tommies will be able to escape. Just managed to get a sliver of sight there. Sliver, sorry. Yeah, sure, I really like the I'm accepting the, uh, that as a term. That's good. I really like the. Uh, the use of the Puma in these games, because they, they do still function as an anti-infantry role, and they're just so double purpose, but look at this, look at this timing. Two Pumas. Amazing by Paul. Oh, oh. He's gone for the Valentine. This is so less often seen in Thumbnail Era, such a rarity these days. The Valentine of all things. This guy must be crazy. Bursting through the wall, I hope you got that camera down. Beautiful. I absolutely did. Did you pan down? You know me too well. You motherfucker! That's <laughs> awesome! Okay. But actually, I was more speaking on the timing of, uh, of J for Jet. To have the two Pumas out in time with the Valentine, I think, is, uh, is really good. J Paul is lulled into a false sense of security chasing down this Puma, where J has sent one round the back. And, uh... This, I what think, is, is it fantastic... doing? Oh, no, it's finally turned around now. Looks more sentient now he's turned around. There we go. Oh, and he got the Faustin as well. The Faustin is going to survive. The Puma is railing on that Valentine. One more shot required. There you go. Excellent play by Jay for Jet. Beautiful play. And he's able to easily maneuver away from the Pirates and the Sappers. Um, Jay currently has no uh, real territory on the right connected, but he has got the left. This is a really strong position for him to be in. It's excellent. This is Jay for Jet all over. He doesn't do that well in the early game at times, but he's we've seen him win big games. Do you remember Helping Hands was playing whilst ill at uh, PC Gamer Weekend in front of all the guys from Sega and us <laughs> casting him and Jay for Jet beat him? That was funny. I do remember that. Yeah. The projector infantry anti tank throwing their bodies at the tank. Spring-loaded shape charge warhead. It's funny though because moments like this are where Paula becomes stronger, so you still have to be really careful um, about about playing from here. Paula has, uh, of course, gone for a Royal Artillery Regiment, so I mean, at least he's a little bit stunted now in terms of his tech. That's something that Jay does uh, have an advantage on. But uh, Jay is going to go for more tech. It looks like he may be going to bring out Tier Four, I would hope. Now I'm sure that Jay probably knew that Puma's micro well are a good counter to Valentine's spam. However, he also had the added bonus of watching Von Ivan expertly nearly counter. No, in the first game today he did counter, didn't he? That's right. Sorry, I was that was just Kimbo. awesome to see. Yeah. What did you see? Sorry, what's on my Sorry, it's, it's like uh, the the engineers were sorry, sappers were running into the house. The infiltration grenades were timed. But the second that Paul got in there, he was straight out of the house before one of the timers went on. It was like beautiful micro. Excellent but, um, utility of the attack ground feature of the pits there, nearly hitting the Puma on, on its reverse path. The newly built Pumas now causing all kinds of problems for the infantry section. Just uh, pushing them away. Victory points have been in Jay's favour. He's managed to flank the west and east sides of Lost Glider and uh, keep the victory points ticking down for Paul. No, VP's been a very strong game here. Um, we need to see Jay get on top of these resources because he's been down on resources for a while. You don't want to be giving 
Uh, you don't want to be giving Paul any any advantages. You see Paul here? He's uh, using the demolition ability from the sappers to clear the hedgerows so that his MG in the church has a much better line of sight. That is really uh, good attention to detail with the Brits. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. You see him but, um, just at the moment. But... Really? There's the uh, commander choice for JV Jet, by the way. Scavenge Doctrine. A classic Doctrine. Oh, um, sorry, no, that wasn't a commander choice. It was just an ability. He's had it for a while. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was rolling with it. <laughs> um, who was prowling in the centre? Piat penetrating. Stone Piney has forced them away. Paul is not bothered about victory points at all. His Royal Engineer in the West just completely ignored the chance to tap the victory point. That's strange behaviour. But it's what he's going for at the moment. He doesn't seem to care about victory points. He doesn't respect Jay enough, in my opinion. And uh, no. this Valentine is, uh, is um, going to dominate the centre for the time being. But it's a matter of respect, isn't it, Dan? Paul clearly doesn't respect Jay for Jet enough. No, no. I mean, I, I can see what he's trying to do. I think, actually, uh, the Valentine, is it on a scout mode at the moment? No. Um, I'm a little intrigued as to what he's going to be doing with that, but, but uh, Paul does have the counter to the Pumas, I feel. He's got two squads of Pirates, he's got the Valentine, like, he could easily close, uh, close both Pumas down. He just needs to get more control uh, of the map, which I think we're seeing him do that now. Mm. Certainly are. Paul, after completely neglecting the cup, Victory points for a while, now spanning out a little bit. His um, Valentine's chilling in the center. Uh, I thought that was going to be a cool angle, but uh, but nope. <laughs> oh, what were you going to capture? The, <laughs> the MG in the church. Oh, I try for them all the time. It's always in the tower, though. If you go to the tower, you can see it. But then he's like out of the hole, isn't he? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> what the hell's going on there? Get in, you crazy bastard! You're gonna fall if you're not careful! <laughs> he can't even see where he's shooting! That's why he's had to get out the window. <laughs> God, he's a big guy, isn't he? Bloody hell. He can't even fit in the church bell tower. Big, big oh, Jeff man. of that Vickers machine gun thing. What a unit. Two Valentines there, eh? Uh, I think Paul's been given enough time to start bringing counters out onto the field. Boomers need to be careful because if they do go down, two Valentines will be very difficult for Jay to deal with in his current build. He's only really got infantry. So Puma game is very fragile. Oh, here we go. The, the sappers are suppressed. Pumas jump into action. There's one sapper squad remaining. We've had an aim shot on one of the Valentines. Sappers are just enough of a deterrent to keep the Pumas at bay, though. Good work there. The great positioning from uh, Jay is that he's got the MG34 covering all the area where the Pumas are playing. So it's a really good way for him to uh, suppress any AT that comes into the area. So very good game uh, sense and positioning from Jay. JLI's duking it out against Tommy's 11 kills to the JLI's. Tommy's sitting on 9, so high kill action. Puma comes up against the church. And the Vickers machine gun is its god. There's nothing he can do against it. Oh, we're starting to see those mines go down. Uh, Stern Pioneers are laying them on the right side road. And uh, mines win games. We've known this for years, so Jay. Laying down the potential game win, game win decisions. We certainly saw it earlier today with Von Ivan versus Paul. Uh, Paul wiped an entire Von Ivan squad at the very last moment in a victory point battle. Very important. MG in the house. Two Valentines coming up against it, and they're not asking for it, it for a date. They're looking to hurt it. Something else wrong with it. I couldn't say it for filtering reasons. <laughs> Dan, do I have to fully filter? Please tell me my levels. This is anniversary classic. I don't... <laughs> I want to be unfiltered. You, you can't censor me forever. 
No, no I... there are esports contractors waiting and, and sponsors, of course. And we are going to be, of course, bought up for a million dollar contract for King of the Hill Season 4. So we must always act like it, Dan, or it'll never happen. Well, actually, think about it this way. Since ESL, I think we, we've done damn good attempt at putting on as professional events as we can. And look where Definitely. it's gone to, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it has gone places. The competitive scene is, is growing and growing still. It's been epic, here. Yeah. It really has. And uh, certainly the Valentines are feeling it right now. They want to get into this competitive action, destroy the rear Puma. Frontal Puma, those still got a full belt bill of health. And he's uh, warting their advance, keeping them at bay. J for Jet, it must be said, has a triple cap right now. He's only lost 35 victory points in this game. And Paul is delving deeper and deeper on down. He's below the halfway mark. I'm really wondering, like, Jay went for the battle group attack, uh, clearly for his um, Volksgrenadier healing. In fact, now he's going for another SWS. But I'm thinking, what's he going to bring up there, SWS? Are we going to see uh, a King Tiger? Do you think he'll have the option for it, or do you think he'll be better suited to a uh, Panther? It's possible. It's possible. We'll have to wait and see. Jay is the master of surprise. He never goes for what you expect him to. Oh, this is nice. Pumas, I think, have found a lone Valentine. <gasps> He's backed into a corner, though. That he wasn't a channel. He, he couldn't go himself. there. It looked like it was a road, but it wasn't. It led to the off-map. However, he's getting away seemingly. No, there we go. Main gun destroyed and taken out by the Pumas. Oh, not only that, the supporting Valentine also finds itself in a really <laughs> bad situation. This has got to be the end for Paul. Seriously. How poorly Massacre managed. Massacre by Shane. Amazing stuff. Wow. I love that. Yep. Paul's raging. <laughs> He's raging indeed. He's taken out of King of the Hill after his three game defense. J for Jet for the win. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do finish today's episodes with King J the the first i think actually this is like of the series but uh we've had von ivan as king we've had paul as king it's uh, already three kings in the first episode are we gonna see jay get on a winning streak next week you're always you smiling king of the hill he's not good at traditional like super um competitive situation tournaments um but yeah he's uh excellent excellent by the way i can see bk mod test done in chat he's just typed information can i vouch for him can i say that he was one of the best co1 players for the past like seven years and he never played co2 yeah, i bet you he'd do well in this format he's got great micro if you put him in a co2 battle best of one i think he'd do well all i'm saying is if he signs up i'll vouch for him i think that'd be cool yeah well i mean uh, if you're if you're eligible to play top 50 like anybody should sh should sign up because it at the end of the day, this is a lot of fun. There's chances to win money, yes, but it's a nice, fun, hardcore event uh, for 1v1 players. And, uh, fun hey. and hardcore, my favorite. I'm enjoying it. It's like it. when this I'm having fun doing like Microsoft Excel. Fun Excel. Fun <laughs> hardcore. I love it. Good stuff. Uh, but everybody, I mean, thanks so much for a fantastic first episode. We couldn't do it without you viewers. You are what drives this, uh, our passion as hobbyist casters. Uh, we love it because you love it. So uh, thanks for coming out today. 629 strong, but we've had 700 viewers at one point today. So it's all good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, guys, it's going to be every Sunday uh, for the next 10 weeks or well, the next nine weeks now. Uh, so make sure you make this your regular weekend uh, ending or, or morning if you're uh, in the US and so on. But uh, thank you, everybody, for subscriptions. Thanks for turning up and watching. Thank you for just supporting. Uh, the event does run on donations, so we're hoping to bring in more so we can up the prize pool. Uh, Relic has very kindly started things off with a £400 uh, donation to the event. Uh, but obviously the prizes will get bigger as we take more in. So it's been awesome to see everyone. Uh, thanks for stopping by. 
And uh, also, Aiden, aren't we thinking of doing the best two players of the entire series face off in episode ten? Is that right? Yes. So I think that we're going to try and reserve some budget for a finale, um, where it'll be something along the lines that it may not be. It depends on how many kings we've got. It may not be two best. It may be like four best. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's see how it goes. Organic. I like the feeling of it. You know, just see how the game, the players perform and who rises to the crop, uh, the cream yeah. of the crop, rather. It's one of those. But like I say, it's uh, it's pretty open-ended uh, what we do with it. But it would be nice to get some kind of finale for the king and crown one, you know, one godly player uh, who kind of then would take over the, the 1v1 best player title. We always do that, mm, don't the we? Mantle, the mantle, indeed. For Just the to put on a trophy the cabinet. But, uh, okay, cool. Well, I think we're uh, okay to tie it off. If you guys uh, wait around for five minutes, I'll be sending a host over to uh, one of my guild members, who I think is playing Sid Meier's Civilization. Uh, his name is Ninja Seb Fan, so please do give him some support. Um, yeah, uh, thank uh, you, everybody. As, as a, a mark of, of, of polite protest, I would love it if we would, like, raid this guy's chat and give him... A lot of positive uh, reinforcement of whatever he's doing in civilization, but make him feel like a god. Like, come on, conquer that territory, build that thing. You know, that'd be quite cool and <laughs> ironic. We could do that. It'd be funny. We could. Uh, I'll do that. We could do that. I'll uh, I'll raid him in a minute. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's I'm... it. I want to raid. That's better. Yeah. Cool. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Much love to you guys for the support. We'll be back next week, 4 p.m. GMT, and it's going to be J for Jet and uh, well, whoever you decide plays against him. Tara. Bye bye for now. Crew ready and waiting. <laughs>